So here I am on the final process for uh, our Testudo run. Um, I'm trying to take the uh, data that I collected and turn it into a mesh map uh, rather than just a point cloud. I took the data I got from the sides, left, right, back, and front side, um, and tried to work with it in MATLAB. I tried to use the code snippet that was suggested, however, I had a really hard time making it work. So I brought my data in and assigned um, each set of XYZ coordinates to a new matrix. Um, I performed transforms I needed to align them um, and before putting them in the matrix. And then I outputted that to a text file using a command called DLM write. Um, apparently it's an archaic command and not suggested to be used anymore, but it worked really well for my purposes and better than anything else I could find in putting out columns of XYZ data uh, separated by a space, also allowing me to have all of the data from all four sides in one place. Um, going into the uh, mesh lab, um, it's a pretty easy process to um, put it in. Um, I can show that process just for uh, suggested purposes. Here is the mesh coming in. Um, we have it with a space um, separation and then it brings in. We can see a testudo there pretty clearly. Um, I can go ahead and change the color so that it's a little easier to uh, see what's going on here. And there we go. There is our testudo. Now it does have a lot of noise in the points. Um, there's things like the column here that were artifacts of the, the collection process that aren't actually what I want to image. Um, the process we go through here is to show the normals and then we go ahead and compute the normals for all the point sets. Um, this value can alter for a value of like 10. The normals go all over the place, but I found that with a value of one that I could get my normals to go in all the same direction, which is apparently just what we want for making a nice mesh. Um, from this point forward, we just apply a remeshing thing, a, a screen poison surface reconstruction. Um, there's various uh, inputs you can put here, including the reconstruction depth. Um, from what I was able to find from videos from the developer of the program, um, 11 or 12 is about your max. After that, you get diminishing returns, and it just takes more um, processing time. So I'm working with 11. Um, minimum number of samples. Uh, from what I'm, I've seen in research, it said that um, 1.5 to 5 is really good if you don't have a lot of noise. But here, I think we do have a lot of noise. So I can go ahead and set that a little higher. And then we can give this a run and see what we get. It takes a second. And what we do get is a lot of mess. Um, this is, however, just a look at a really quick attempt, seeing what kind of garbage this will produce for me. However, this was not my first attempt. I've done many and was able to produce something a little cleaner. Um, So in this mesh, I've went ahead and cleaned up. Let's take those normals off. I've cleaned up to Studio so that my points are just what I'm looking for or more closely aligned with what I'm looking for. Got out, uh, got rid of that column data so that we're more closely looking at just Testudo himself. Um, and I did take a couple of runs with this uh, mesh. I did one with the normals facing this way and one with them facing that way to uh, see if I could properly create a testudo. And on one of those directions, I got this, which is, well, it's kind of the front half of testudo. I have no idea why he has such a giant bubble butt. Um, the second uh, run I got with the directions facing the other way, I got a testudo in a cone. Um, it's kind of his rear side. Um, I experimented quite a bit, was but was not able to get one that covered both sides of Testudo for some reason. I could not figure out how to do it. Um, I did get a little cleaner version of Testudo um, here, but uh, then the program crashed and it does not like to reload up the same things. It just hangs for me. So, so far this is the best I've been able to do in producing Testudos. And, well, that's my mesh.